All right, everybody, welcome back to Make Your Mark NBA channel. It's your boy Mark here again, and I'm coming back with another video today. I've done a few videos recently on different players in the NBA this season and what a championship will do for their legacy. So I did Steph Curry already and what a fifth championship will do for him. I did KD, what a third championship will do for him. And I also did a video on Nikola Jokic and what capturing a first championship will do for his legacy. And now for today's video, I'm going to be discussing what a second championship will do for Giannis Antetokounmpo's legacy. Now, of course, I also did a video recently on Giannis. And in the video, I gave my breakdown on why I think Giannis should be considered considered already the second greatest power forward in the history of the NBA. Now, of course, I do understand that at this time it is somewhat of a debate. But if he's able to capture his second championship this season... I think that debate should be put to rest, all right? If Giannis gets a second championship this season, that means he'll have two titles. He'll have two finals MVPs. He already has two regular season MVPs. He's also won a defensive player of the year, and he's the third player to win an MVP and defensive player of the year in the same season. The other two would be Michael Jordan and Hakeem Olajuwon. And speaking of Hakeem Olajuwon, you know, we consider him – anywhere from top 10 to top 15 all time. And, you know, if Giannis is able to win a second championship this year, what would be the difference between those two players in regards to what they accomplished in their career? That being Giannis and Hakeem. They both would have two titles. They both would have two finals MVPs. I mean, of course, we're assuming Giannis would get the MVP, the finals MVP for his team. Most likely he would if they win. Um, also, you know, Giannis has two MVPs in the regular season to Hakeem's one. Now, Hakeem does have two Defensive Player of the Year awards to Giannis's one, but you see the comparison, though. See, I bring up things like this just because, you know, I'm always looking at what different players add to their resume year in and year out. And when I look at their accomplishments, I always compare it to some of the all-time greats and where they measure up in regards to some of the players that we consider top 10 or top 15. And I don't think a lot of times people realize how comparable certain players are to each other. And I know when I bring up a player like Hakeem Olajuwon, yes, he put in more years than Giannis has up until this point. If you look up, look up some of Hakeem's all-time stats, I mean, he's like top 10 in steals all-time at center. He's number one on the all-time block shots list since they've been counting blocks in 1974. You know, things like that stand out, and they mean a lot. Those things matter when you're trying to break down the greatness of an all-time great player like Hakeem Olajuwon. Those are things that should be brought up. But all I'm saying is when we're watching these players play today and we see them update their resume year by year, we have to be accustomed to updating our overall evaluation on the hierarchy of the all-time great players within the history of the NBA because things change. Players accomplish things or accomplish more things than certain players did before their time. So that's why I make videos like these. And that's why I wanted to do a video on Giannis Antetokounmpo today because he has a chance this year and just even before his career comes to an end. If he's able just to get one more championship, I think he should certainly be in the top 15 all time. And I think that when you keep going, as he keeps going forward in his career, he could end up arguably being in the top 10 because he's an all-time great two-way player. He's a walking double-double, a player that's going to get you no less than 25 points per game, you know, 10, 12 rebounds. He's one of the best playmaking power forwards, passing power forwards in the history of the NBA. And he's an elite level, all-time great defensive player. And he already has had an all-time dominant finals performances, like performance, like the performance he had against the Phoenix Suns a couple years ago was up there with some of the performances we saw from Shaq, you know, guys like Tim Duncan, of course, Jordan, LeBron. He's in that class from what we saw from him just a few years back. And to be honest, the closeout performance he had in the finals in game six that's probably the greatest closeout performance in the history of the NBA Finals. Or well, it's definitely 
an argument for that. I think, in my opinion, I would probably rank that number one to go out with 50 points. Like, that was a spectacular performance. And he was, in that game, he was, <laughs> you know, the funny part about that game is that he excelled in his weakest area, which is at the free throw line. That's what made that game so special. Because that was when everybody was counting down on Giannis at the free throw line and all that. And he was able to go out there and make, like, however many free throws, 16, 18 free throws, whatever he did that game. So, yes, if Giannis is able to win another championship this year, and really just in general in his career, sometime in his career, but, of course, my videos are focusing on this year, what a player can do this year. Is he If he's able to win a championship this year, then – I already made the video, as I stated earlier, about him being the second greatest power forward ever. I I don't think after he does that, you can make an argument for anybody else being in that position all the time. I think he deserves that spot, and he should be considered a top 15 player all time. And, you know, once again, for people that have Hakeem Olajuwon possibly in their top 10, because some people do, some people do, then if Giannis is able to do that, then you should at least consider him being potentially in that position as well. I'm not saying I would have him there definitively. I think Hakeem is in my top 15. So therefore, Giannis would have to be in that same area. But Giannis is an amazing player, and he has a chance to add to his legacy this year as long as health is not an issue to Chris Middleton. If Chris Middleton is healthy, I probably would still lean towards the Bucks in the Eastern Conference to come out the East. But it's close, though, so we'll see what happens. But anyway, though, leave your comments. Let me know what you think. If you enjoyed the content, give me a like on the video. And, of course, if you're new to this channel and you enjoyed the content, then not only can you like the video, but you can also hit the subscribe button as well because we're going to be having more videos coming out like this as frequently as possible, giving in-depth breakdowns and evaluations and predictions in regards to different NBA topics and NBA players as well. So I appreciate all the support. And once again, all praise be to the Most High. Thank you again.